Good morning, children. How are you? Today we're going to learn lesson one, the curve of colors. Look at the picture on your screen. Can you find the curve of colors? What is it? Can you guess? You're right. It's the rainbow. The rainbow is the curve of colors. Today let's learn all about the rainbow, okay? Can you see how many colors are in the rainbow? Count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven colors. Do you know what those colors are? Ready? Look at it. I'm going to ask you. Okay. Now, how many colors was that? You're right. Seven colors. What are they? Violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. Very good. How many colors are there? Seven colors. What are they? Violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. Seven colors. Very good. Can you sing a rainbow? I can sing a rainbow. I can sing a rainbow. Violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. Very good. Good. Today we, do you know the short form of the rainbow is Vibgor. What? Vibgor. Yes, the short form for the color names is Vibgor. How do we get that short form? Hmm. I wonder what it is. Do you know how we get that short form? Let's see. Yes, the first letter of each rainbow color. V for violet, I for indigo, B for blue, G for green, Y for yellow, O for orange, R for red. We get Vibgor. What? Vibgor. That's a fun word to say, no? Say it loud. Vibgor! Say it soft. Vibgor. It's a fun word. What does Vibgor mean? Yes, it's the short term for the rainbow colors. Violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. Remember that. What is the short form? Vibgor. You're so smart. You're doing great. Today we have a poem about the rainbow. It was written by Christina Rossetti. What? Christina Rossetti wrote the poem, The Rainbow. Do you know a person who writes a poem is called a poet? Did you know that? Yes, let's do the poem together. I'll say it first and you repeat after me, okay? Boat sail on the rivers, ships sail on the seas, but the clouds that sail across the sky are prettier than these. There are bridges on the rivers as pretty as you please, but the bow that bridges heaven and over top the trees and builds a road from earth to sky is prettier far than these. Very good. Now you want to sing it with me? You repeat after me, okay? Boats sail on the rivers. Ships sail on the seas. But the clouds that sail across the sky are prettier than these. There are bridges on the rivers as pretty as you please. But the bow that bridges heaven and over top the trees and builds a road from earth to sky is prettier far than these. Okay, now you want to say it again after me? There are boats sail on the rivers Again, boats sail on the rivers and ships sail on the seas. 
But the clouds that sail across the sky are far prettier than these. There are bridges on the rivers as pretty as you please. But the bow that bridges heaven and over top the trees and builds a road from earth to sky is prettier far than these. Very good. Now let's sing it together, okay? If you want to practice the rhyme some more, you can rewind the video and practice. Let's sing it together, okay? Boats sail on the rivers and ships sail on the seas But the clouds that sail across the sky are prettier than these There are bridges on the rivers as pretty as you please But the bow that bridges heaven and over top the trees And builds a road from earth to sky is far prettier than these Very good! good job! You guys are doing great! Now who wrote the poem? You're right! Good job remembering! Christina Rossetti! Very good! And what shells are on the rivers? Yes! You're right! Boats! What sails on the seas? Wow! You guys are so smart! Yes! Ships sail on the seas! Now I have a trick! What sails across the sky? Do you know? You're too smart! Yes! The clouds sail across the sky! Very good! But what is prettier than everything? Can you tell me? Yes! The rainbow! The rainbow is prettier than the boats on the river, the ships on the sea, the clouds in the sky, or the bridges over the rivers. It's prettier than everything. Our poem says that boats that sail on the river, ships sail on the sea. It says clouds are prettier than the boats in the ship, but then it tells us that rainbows are prettier than everything, right? Yes. Do you like looking at the rainbow? Yes. We see clouds in the sky every day and we'll say, oh, that's so pretty. But whenever we see a rainbow, we'll say, Mom, Mom, Dad. And we'll call somebody that's by us and we'll say, Look, there's a rainbow. Look, there's a rainbow. We feel so happy. So the poet also feels like that. Christina Rosetti felt like the rainbow is more beautiful than anything that she's seen. So that's why she wrote the poem. She's comparing the beauty of the rainbow to the other beautiful things that she's seen. And she says, the rainbow is more beautiful than everything. That's what Christina Rossetti is saying in her poem. Okay. Now, in our poem, there's some awesome words. They're called meanings. You know, with awesome words, it helps us to be able to read better, to write better, and to speak better. So it's very important to learn our awesome words, our meanings. Okay, what are the, some of the awesome words from our rhyme? Sail. What? Sail. What does sail mean? Do you have an idea? Tell me aloud what you think sail means. You're pretty close, you're right. To travel by boat or ship across the sea means sail. What does sail mean? To travel by boat or ship across the sea. Say it again. Sail. To travel by boat or ship on or across the sea. Sail. To travel by boat or ship on or across the sea. Very good. What is our next word? Bridges. Bridges. Hmm. In the poem it says there are bridges over rivers. What is a bridge? Hmm. Can you think? A structure across a river or a road that provides a path. Say with me, a structure across a river or a road that provides a path. 
See, we use a bridge for a car to go over a river or to go over another road. Or we use it to walk across to avoid the traffic, right? Or to walk across so we can go over the river or the small stream without getting wet. So a bridge is a structure across a river or a road that provides a path. Tell me again. Bridges. Bridges. Good. A structure across a river or a road that provides a path. Very good. You guys are doing great. What's our next word? Overtops. What? Overtops. We know what over means. We know what top means. What is overtop? Same thing. It means we're over the top of something. Okay. To rise over the top of something. Over tops. To rise over the top of something. Say it. Over tops. To rise over the top of something. Very good. Now, before we move on, if you have not completed your studio or your companion, please pause the video now and complete your companion and studio work and then you can restart the video. Okay, good. Next, let's start our grammar portion. Here we have nouns. What? Nouns. What are nouns? Hmm, can you remember? What are nouns? Tell me out. Nouns are a person, place, thing, or animal. A noun is a person, place, thing, or animal. What is a noun? A person, place, thing, or animal. Now you tell me, what is a noun? Very good. A noun is a person, place, thing, or animal. Now let's look at person. Do you know what a person can be? A boy. Yes, a person is a boy. Right? Very good. Next, a doctor. A doctor is a person. Did you know that? Yes, you're so smart. What is another person? Mother. Do you know that your mother is a person? Mother is a person. Teacher. Teacher. I'm a teacher, yes? I'm a person. A teacher is a person. Again, look. Person means like boy, doctor, mother, teacher. So nouns can be a person. Nouns are naming words. Did you see that? See, boy names something. Doctor, mother, teacher. Nouns are naming words. They can name a person. A noun can name a person. Next, we have place. Can you think of some places? School. School is a name of a place. We go there every day, yes? Park. Park is a place. We like to play there in the evenings, right? With our friends. Park is a place. Shop. Shop is a place we go to buy provisions. Maybe some of you are going and buying chocolates. Don't eat too much junk food. But we like to go to the shop. Shop is a place. Zoo. Zoo is a place. Do you know what a zoo is? It's a place where we go to see animals. Did you ever go to the zoo? Really? Did you like to see all the animals? Yes. So a place is, is a noun. It is, we have naming words for places. School, park, shop, zoo. They are all places. So what are nouns? Nouns are naming words. Nouns are naming words. They name a person, place, thing, or animal. Okay, we've looked at person and place. 
What about thing? What are things? Things are objects. Things are objects like a chair. A chair, it is made of material, right? It's not living. So it is a thing. A tree is a thing. A bag is a thing. A book is a thing. Okay, these are all objects around us. Chair, tree, bag, book. They are all objects around us. So we know that a noun is a naming word. It names a person, place, thing, or animal. Look at this right here. What is this? Is this a person? No, 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 no. Is it a place? No. Is it a thing? Yes. What is the name of this thing? Cup. Right. It is a cup. A cup is a name of a thing. It is a noun. Cup is a noun. It's the name of a thing. Nouns name things. So what are nouns? Noun can be a person, place, thing, or animal. Okay, we've looked at three. Let's look at animal. Can you think of some animal names? Yes, elephant, dog, good, snake. Oh, and bird. Those are all animals. Very good. Let's look at these again. What are example of person? Boy, doctor, mother, teacher. They are person. How about places? School, park, shop, zoo. Can you think of any others? Tell me. Oh, you're so smart. Now, what about things? Chair, tree, bag, book. Can you think of any others? Duster. Yes. Mouse. These are all things. Yes, they are objects around us. They are things. Next, animals. Elephant, dog, snake, bird. Can you think of any others? You're right, a cat is an animal. <gasps> lion, oh yes, you're right, lion is an animal. Yes, so we know that nouns are naming words. They name a person, place, thing, or animal. Very good. Did you know that nouns can be singular or plural? Did you know that? Ah, you do know that. You know that cloud means there is one cloud. But if we say clouds, it means we have two or more, right? Singular means one. Plural means two or more. What? Singular means one. Plural means two or more, right? Can you think? Tree. Tree means we have one tree. It is singular. It means only one. Trees means it's plural. It means we have more than one. Two or more, right? Very good. What is this? Boat. Boat is singular. It's a singular noun. It, that means we only have one. Boats. That means we have more than one. Two or more, right? Here we have two boats. Box. Box. Box is singular. It means we have one box. Boxes. Means we have Plural form, more than one. Bench. Bench means one bench. Benches. Benches means more than one. We have 
three benches in our picture, right? Now look at these words. Cloud. C-L-O-U-D. Cloud. Now look at cloud. C-L-O-U-D-S. We added S. Most words we can add S. Tree. Trees. Boat. Boats. But look here. Box has ES, boxes, and bench has ES, benches. Listen to the words. You can hear the sound difference. Not always, but most of the time you can hear the sound difference. Clouds, trees, boats, boxes, benches. Can you hear the difference? Boats, boxes, S. Hear the difference? Most of the time, when you have to add S or ES, when you say the word, you can hear the sound difference. Clouds, trees, boats. When we have to add ES, boxes, benches. You can hear the sound difference most of the time. Not always, but most of the time. Here is how we make wolf. For adding S, most words, to make them plural, all we do is add S. Look at the word. Pen, pens. See, I have the word in black. When we make it plural, I added the S in red color. Look. Pen, pens. Cat, cats. Bag, bags. Eraser, erasers. Duck, ducks. Car, Cars, rainbow, rainbows, cup, cups, bed, beds. Can you hear the sound? See, most words we just add S. Okay, to words ending in CH, SH, S, double S, X, and Z, we add ES. Okay, in words ending in CH, S, H, S, double S, X and Z, we add E, S. Look at these words, lunch. What is the last two letters of lunch? It's C, H, so we have to add E, S, lunches. Can you hear the S sound? Right. If a word ends in C, H, S, H, S, double S, X or Z, we add ES, lunches. Next, glasses, glass. You see, glass ends with double S, two S's, right? So we have to add ES, glasses. Okay, what's the next word? Box. What, le what is the last letter of box? You're right, it's X. When we have X, we have to add ES, boxes. What letters do, when word ends with CH, SH, S, double S, X or Z, we have to add ES. Okay, next word, dish. What is the last two letters of dish? Yes, you're right, it's SH. When a word ends with SH, we have to add ES to make it plural. Dishes. Next. Fox, fox. What letter does fox end with? Yes, it ends with X. When a word ends with X, we have to add ES, foxes. Again, what's the next word? Wish. What does wish end with? SH, good. SH means, what do we have to add? Do we have to add S or ES? You're right, we have to add ES. Words ending in CH, SH, S, double S, X, or Z, we have to add ES. Wishes, it's, wish ends with SH, so we have to write wishes. Very good. Bus, what does bus end with? It ends with S. So what do we need to add? Yes, ES. We have to add ES. Buses. Now the next word, blitz. Blitz. 
That means go super fast. Blitz. Right? Blitz ends with a Z. So we have to add ES. Blitzes. Blitzes. Okay. And let's look at the last word. Quiz. It ends with Z. But this one is special. Sometimes when a word ends with Z, we have to double the Z and add ES. We have to add an extra Z and add ES. So we get quizzes. Okay. Not always, but sometimes if a word ends with Z, we have to double the Z and add ES. So we get quizzes. Okay. Look at these words one more time. Most words we add S. Okay, to make them plug. But some words we add ES. Words ending in CH, SH, S, double S, X, and Z, we add ES. Most of the time we can hear the sound difference. When we add S, it says S. When we add ES, it says S. Okay, pens, cats. Bags, erasers, ducks, cars, rainbows, cups, beds. Now look at the ES words. Lunches, glasses, boxes, dishes, foxes, wishes, buses, blitzes, quizzes. Can you hear the difference? You can't always hear the difference, but most of the time you can. And that helps us to know if we need to write S or ES. How do we know if we need to write ES though? We check the last letters of the word. If it ends with CH, SH, S, double S, X or Z, we add ES. Very good. Now there are some other words ending with Oh, how do we write words ending with O? Oh. You know, if it has a consonant before the O, we add ES. What is a consonant? Well, first you have to know your vowels. What are the vowels? A, E, I, O, U. We learned this vowel song. You ready? The vowels are A, E, I, O, U. The vowels are A, E, I, O, U. And sometimes Y. And sometimes Y. Yes? Do you remember? So, if it's not a vowel, then it is a consonant. If it is not a vowel, then it is a consonant. The vowels are A, E, I, O, U. Those are the five main vowels, right? Good. So, consonants are B, C, D, F, G, H, J, K, L, M, N, P, Q, R, S, T, V, W, X, Y, Z. Right? So, but so much easier to remember. If it's not a vowel, it is a consonant. What are the vowels? A, E, I, O, U. So let's look at buffalo. What comes before O? What comes before O? L. L comes before O. L is a consonant. So we write ES. Buffaloes. Yes. Hero. What comes before O? Yes, it is an R. R comes before O. R is a consonant. So we write ES, heroes. Yes. Next word is, tell me. You're right, potato. What comes before O? The letter T. Is T a vowel or a consonant? It's a consonant. If a consonant comes before O, what do we write? ES. So we write potatoes. What? Potatoes. Next word, volcano. What comes before the O in volcano? N. N is a consonant. Very good. So we have to write S or ES? ES. Very good. So we write volcanoes. 
Next, tomato. What comes before the O? T. Very good. T is a vowel or a consonant? Yes, it's a consonant. So we have to write ES, tomatoes. You can not really hear the S sound in these because you hear the O sound stronger. So we hear buffaloes, heroes, potatoes, tomatoes, volcanoes. Okay, so when it ends with O, we can't always hear the S sound, but we know that if a word ends with O, if it has a consonant before the O, we add ES. So, mosquito. Oh, this season has too many mosquitoes. Ouch! Not one mosquito, but mosquitoes. Ow, ow! Did you get bit by any mosquitoes lately? Uh, what does mosquito have before O? T. It's a consonant. Very good. So we have to add ES. Mosquitoes. Yeah. Very good. But what do we do if there's a vowel before the O? We know that if a consonant comes before the O, we have to add ES. What do we do if there's a vowel before the O? Do you know? We add only S. We just add S. What do we add? S. Look at studio. I. I is before O. I is a vowel, right? So we write studios. We just add S. Now, what are the vowels again? Remind me. A, E, I, O, U. Very good. So if a vowel comes before O, we add only S. Look at video. What comes before the O? E. E comes before the O. So we just add S. Videos. Next word, radio. What comes before the O? I. I comes before the O. So we write only S. Radios. Zoo. What comes before the O? Another O. O, O, O. Yes, two O's. So we just write S. Zoos. Next, kangaroo. You're right again. Two O's. Very good. So what do we write? S. Kangaroos. Studio. Studios. Video. Videos. Radio. Radios. Zoo. Zoos. Kangaroo. Kangaroos. So the rule is, if a consonant comes before the O, we write ES. If there is a vowel before the O, we write only S. But you know what? There are some rule breakers. There are some naughty words. These words don't follow the rules. Did you ever break a rule? Hmm? Tell the truth. Did you eat a chocolate when mommy said not to? Did you run in the school corridor? These naughty rule, words don't obey the rules. Do you want to know what words don't obey the rules? Piano. Piano is a very naughty word. It does not obey the rule. We just write pianos. Photo. It breaks all the rules. We just add S. Halo. It's breaking the rules. We just add S. And solo. We just add S. All the rest of the words, they follow the rules. What are the rule breakers? Piano, photo, halo, solo. These are naughty words. They break the rules. But in general, the words follow the rules. If there's a consonant before O, we write ES. If there's a vowel before O, we write only S. You got it? If you have any doubt, you can always re rewind the video and watch it again. Now, I want you to pause and complete your studio and your companion about plural forms of nouns. Okay, and then you can start your video again. Now, let's talk about articles. You know, there are three articles. 
a n and the but today we're going to talk about two of the articles a n and so how many articles are there did you listen closely ah you have to listen i said there are three articles how many three articles a n and the today we're going to talk about two of them a n and do you know a and N tell us that there is one of something. A and N tell us that there is one of something. Only one. If you say A and, it means there is only an ant. That means there is only one. An octopus, that means there is only one. Okay. A ball means there is only one. If we say A or an it, in front of a word, in front of a noun, it means there is only one. If you have three, four, five, or even two, you should not use A or an. A and an means there is only one. So I could say one ant or an ant. It means the same thing. Okay. So we use A and N to show that there is only one. But how do we know when to use A and when to use N? Are you listening? Okay, look here. Look at the first word. What is the word? Ant. Very good. Now I want you to look at the first letter. See, when a word starts with a vowel, A, E, I, O, or U, then we write an. We write an. A-N, an. So let's circle the first letter. What is the first letter of ant? A. So what do I have to write? I have to write an. I have to write an. An ant. What? An ant. Good. What is the next word? Elephant. What letter does elephant start with? E. So I have to write an elephant. An elephant. Because E is a vowel, we write an. An means there is one elephant. Next, igloo. Igloo. What letter does igloo start with? I. I is a vowel, so we have to write an. We have to write and very good now look at the next word what is it octopus Shh. octopus and it's eight legs right octopus circle the first letter what letter does it start with o o is a vowel so we have to write you're so smart yes we have to write and and goes before words that start with a vowel very good next word umbrella what is the letter u yes so what do we write and an umbrella very good you're so smart what is the next word i circle the first letter what is it E. So what do we write? An I. Very good. Now, if you look, there are words that start with consonants. If it starts with a consonant or a consonant sound, we use A. We use A. A shows us that there is one. Just like an shows us there is one, A also shows us one. We use an before words that start with a vowel or a vowel sound. A, we start with words that start with a consonant or a consonant sound. Look at the first word. What is it? Ball. Ball starts with a B. So we write A. A ball. Next word, cake. It starts with C. So we write A cake. It means one cake. Can you read the next word? Tree. Tree starts with a T. It is a consonant. Very good. So we write A. A tree. Very good. 
Can you read the next word for me? Good, you're right, it's hat. Hat starts with an H. Circle the first letter. Now, H is a vowel or a consonant? Yes, it's a consonant, so we write A. A hat, very good. Next word, house. Circle the first letter, house. Is it a vowel or a consonant? It's a consonant. So what do we write? A. A house. One house. Next word. Story. Circle the first letter. S. Is it a vowel or a consonant? Yes, it's a consonant. So what do we write? A. Good. Now let's look at our words. We use A and AND to show that there is one of something. So an ant means one ant. An elephant means one elephant. An igloo means there is one igloo. Okay, look it down box. A ball means there is one ball. A cake means there is one cake. A and an show that there is one of something. A tree means one tree. Now, you can pause the video and go ahead and do your ANN article in your studio and your companion. Okay. Now, I want to say bye-bye till next time. Happy learning!